Have you ever wondered how you could never miss a race of the NASCAR Pepsi Cup Series? Well, if you scroll over to the playlist tab, scroll down a little bit and find this little section here, you will see all of the archives from every race of the Napa slash Pepsi Cup Series to ever be run. So make sure to leave a like and subscribe on all these videos and enjoy. Here we are then, three races left to go in the Pepsi Cup Series Season 5, and we are still here in North Dakota as we get ready for the second race in a row at this amazing racetrack, this time on the infield road course. The Roval layout, as you can see there, this is again race 11 of 13 in the season. Just three more to go here in Season 5, let's head on to the ones to watch. Kyle Busch is on pole in that three cheat number eight car for Richard Childress Racing. Can he win today? He's going to have to fight off a lot of heavy hitters from around the globe, such as Australia's Shane Van Gisbergen, who ran well at Allentown two races ago in his first start, I believe, in the series, his first oval start in NASCAR. Ty Gibbs, though, the rookie in the 54, making, I believe, just his third career start. He's looking strong after qualifying Brody Kostecki as well, another V8 supercar driver from Australia. Strong in that 62 car starting right behind Gibbs up towards the front. Mike Rockenfeller, German driver, starting behind Chase Elliott in front of the 22. That is Scott McLaughlin, another V8, former V8 supercar driver, current IndyCar driver, replacing Joey Logano for the rest of the season. Logano was injured in a crash in Allentown. Joey will be back for next season's Daytona 500. Kamui Kobayashi from Japan is in the 18 car this weekend, which is now part-time since Kyle Busch left it. And the 51 belongs to Jensen Button for Rick Ware Racing. Button, former F1 world champion, representing Great Britain here this weekend. And Janie... Jamie Wincup, the fourth and final Australian in the field from V8 Supercars. He is in the 50 for the Money Team Racing this weekend in the uh, beautiful slash ugly pit viper car that I don't really have an opinion on. Anyways, here we go. Rolling off and here is the starting lineup. Trevor Banana starts alongside ESMN on row number one. NASCAR Mini Stop Motions and Stop Motion Brothers line up in row number two. MLCS Racing Network is alongside the NASCAR Coca-Cola Cup Series. They make up row number three. In row four, we have the SMCS Racing Network and Penske King 22. The Sports Corner is alongside Hard for Menard in row number five. In row number six, we have NLS Network and the TMCS Racing Network. Behind them, we have Nitro Apple in row seven. is alongside the One Mile Cup Series. Row 8 is made up of Legion and the Gaming Duo 12. Row number 9, we have the Jimmy John's Cup Series and Ryan Lopez. Row 10, we have Mickey and Jeffy Show, SRT0616. Bell starting 19th today, the championship leader. Rodco Racing is in row 11 alongside Ken 142. And Bryce's Sports and Plushies is alongside Gavin Beers 12 in row 12. Noah's Gaming 2.0 is in row 13 alongside Mr. Coffee YT. In row 14 is R Alamo and Earl Racing Productions. In row 15, we have Drake and Friends and Log Drive. And in row number 16, it's Zach on the track alongside Mr. Fly to the Sky. In row 17, we have Arzakwa 5775 and Ars Conover, with row 18 being Noah Probably and Luigi Plush Productions. Rounding out today's field in row number 19, in the 37th position, we have My Wi-Fi Crash. That is your field for today's race. It's going to be 10 laps. We have six international stars. I put stars because Daniel Suarez is not included and this is part-time drivers. Suarez is a star, but you know, he's full-time, so he doesn't really count. Anyways, 
Pace car is hitting pit road. I'm alone today in the commentary booth, but nobody really cares. Green flag is in the air from North Dakota. Good start for Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott spins. Doesn't hit anything, so he's still going, but that could have championship implications if he cannot recover from this. Already down 200 something points on Christopher Bell in this championship with just three races to go. That is the last thing he needed. And Bell is already up, I believe, seven spots since the start. Shane Van Gisbergen going at it with Chris Buescher as Kyle Busch pulls away. Buescher looking for his first series win. Gisbergen in his second start, Kostecki giving Buescher a big push. And in turn number one and sideways, Kobayashi crashes hard and Ty Gibbs as well. Up in the air, McLaughlin, Truex, and the 77 Rockefeller all involved here in this caution in the early parts of lap number three. Big, big impact for Ty Gibbs and Kamui Kobayashi there. I mean, the 54 got some airtime when it climbed up on top of the 18. All three Interstate Batteries cars in the field demolished. It's a Joe Gibbs racing nightmare here as Kyle Busch will be the halfway bonus winner here as this will take us to the end of lap number five. Kyle gets an extra 25 points, which should help him move up closer to second, which I think would be the best for pretty much anybody at this point in the championship, given how well Bell is running. There's a look at what happened. Looked like either the 18 got sideways or maybe contact from the 22. Three of our six international stars taken out in this accident, though, which is just unfortunate. Kobayashi, McLaughlin, and Rockefeller all collected. Ty Gibbs and Martin Truex Jr. as well, two road course ringers in this mess as we get ready to restart. With five laps to go here in North Dakota. Green flag is back out. Suarez jumping out. Van Gisbergen down the inside trying to take the lead from Kyle Busch. He's going to do it, but Busch shoves him out of the way and takes back the race lead. Busch are looking on that outside, trying to keep third position. He's going to lose it and fall into the clutches of uh, Brody Kostecki right now. But a big push from Christopher Bell gets Busher back up into third place. And there's contact and Hamlin in the wall. Chase Elliott collected both drivers out of this race. And major championship implications for the man who runs second. And you would have to think this is pretty much, although not mathematically right now, this is pretty much realistically the end of the championship for Chase Elliott who currently sits second. And unless really Kyle Busch or Tyler Reddick can pull out a win, I would say this is pretty much Christopher Bell's championship now. Realistically, of course. Mathematically, anything is possible, but you could just see their bold move from Kyle Larson. And Denny Hamlin does not seem happy, although he kind of pinched him. Anyways, two laps to go. Green flag is back in the air. Kyle Busch the leader. Van Gisbergen on the outside. Busch locks up. Contact between the two. Contact car is spinning behind. Busch off the track. Shane Van Gisbergen leads here in North Dakota as that was Tyler Reddick spinning on the restart. Now Stenhouse and Amarillo on the wall. Final lap for the driver making his second career start. But he locks up and goes straight on. Kyle Busch leads, oh he gets turned, and Chris Buescher is going to lead, and the yellow is out as Kyle Busch rejoins and causes a massive accident and clogs the track completely, and Chris Buescher is going to win in front of Christopher Bell. Oh my god. <laughs> What, what what monstrosity of a restart have we created? What just went on? There's Kyle locking up into Van Gisbergen. There's Reddick getting turned. Jimmy Johnson was around. I think the 24 wreck there as well. Lots of contact there as Bush or shoved Bush off the track or something like that. And then Bush just completely rejoined into Chris Buescher. Buescher clearly not happy, hit him twice there and just drove through him. And then Kyle Busch, probably out of frustration, 
rejoin the racetrack, there could be a potential penalty for Bush. Doubt it for Busher, but Kyle Bush for rejoining unsafely could definitely get a penalty for that because, I mean, he took out a ton of cars and clogged the track for everyone else and caused the race to end under yellow, not giving Bell a shot to potentially get Busher because he was almost there when the yellow came out. But Chris Busher picks up his first win of the season, first win, I believe, of his career over Christopher Bell. Here are the rest of the results. You can just see some of the uh, chaos and notable results. We are just getting a stat in. There were 11 different crashes in that final two-lap span. Crashes or spins or incidents. As you can see there, uh, Mr. Coffee YT, that's Eric Amarola, he spun. R.S. Conover, that's Stenhouse, he spun into the wall. Byron was around. Reddick was around. Johnson was around on the restart. Van Gisbergen locked up and then went all over the place. Bush was in the grass with Busher. Bush then spun and rejoined unsafely and caused a huge crash. Sindrick and Briscoe behind them also piled in. And Briscoe, I believe, was underneath Sindrick. But Kyle Busch not going to end up finishing. Kyle Larson out of the race. Ryan Blaney in the final lap. Harvick was involved in the final lap melee. Chase Elliott also failed to finish. And here are the championship standings right now. It is a 367-point gap for Christopher Bell heading into these final two races. However, it's not over as... There are 420 points still left up to grab over the course of the next two races. But I mean, yeah, 367 points. I mean, that's leaving what? Bell can only score like 60 points these next two races. And uh, Kyle Busch or Chase Elliott or somebody like that pretty much has to sweep it all. Tyler Reddick, the other one in contention still for this championship. Everybody else is out of it now. Shane Van Gisbergen up to 24th in the standings, though, after finishing third here in this race. Eric Jones somehow finished fourth. I didn't mention this earlier, but Jensen Button quietly sneaked up into P5 in the 51 car, pretty much because he avoided all the chaos there. He's one of the drivers who survived this melee here late in the race. As you can see, the rest of the points, Jensen up to 36 in the standings, however... That's not really going to do anything, but he is a part-time driver, so he has reason to be proud of that, earning 50 points here today. A crazy, crazy race. And this next little segment we're going to have to come up here replaces the championship favorite or championship contenders section. To clinch the championship in Iowa next race, Bell needs to either lead six of the 12 laps, which is half the race, which would also give him the most laps led. Um, he either needs four out of 12 laps led, plus winning the halfway bonus. This doesn't account for if he finishes in spots two through ten. And you saw the other two. I completely forgot them. Anyways, max points remaining 420, 12 laps at Iowa, 10 laps at Reno, two halfway bonuses, and two race wins. Thank you all for watching that crazy race. I couldn't keep up. I really needed somebody to help me commentate that. Maybe one of you guys can next time, though. In Iowa, we got 12 laps up ahead. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.